To many of us, it's the most exciting night of the year, Big Buck Night here on Michigan Outdoors. Our live special is 8 p.m. tonight. Now, if you're watching in the Grand Rapids area or Detroit area, Channel 35 or 56, you'll see the show before Big Buck Night. The rest of the state, you'll see it afterwards. But we still have a great show for you coming up. We're going to talk about deer, how the deer season was. We're going to talk about steelhead fishing because that's the time of year right now for steelhead fishing. So stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost. It's Thursday night time for Michigan Outdoors. From the November 14th, the evening before opening day, it didn't look particularly good. Most of the state was wet, roads were bad, there's nothing that dampens the spirits of hunters more than freezing rain dripping down our necks and rain was in the forecast. Deer were active the day before the opener though. With cloudy skies, they seemed to come out earlier in the evening to feed. And everybody saw deer in the North Country on November 14th. You could hardly drive past a field or a forest edge and not catch some glimpse of a whitetail. Now it's widespread myth that deer know when it's hunting season, but they don't. Their behavior is the same year round. They're always wary. They're always afraid of animals that eat meat. They identify meat eaters by their smell. Dogs, coyotes, bears, humans, it's all the same to a deer. We all eat venison, and that's why we all hunt. The trophies to hunters, though, are a bonus. Big racks are incidental, but they are a status symbol to the deer and to hunters, too. For some hunters, bagging a big buck represents skill, but to most of us, it's just luck. In the evening twilight, does this deer have a rack? Maybe we'll find out in the morning. Opening morning, it was gray. The temperature was just at freezing in most counties. But the air was dry, no rain, and the snow held as a backdrop against the brown woods, giving an advantage to hunters. And I was lucky. At 7.15 in the morning, a little four-pointer came within 50 yards of my blind, and my 44 Magnum handgun put a buck on the pole. Two hours later, my son connected with a little six-point, so for Zach and I, our hunt was over. In the afternoon, I could cruise around with the cameras in my four-wheel drive looking for other successful hunters, and I found plenty of them. About three in the afternoon, I ran across Bob Bolton from Midland, and he needed some help. He had downed a spike horn in a swamp. He was still hunting in the morning. And you know, the trouble with hunting swamps is that it's not always easy to drag your deer back to camp. In fact, it's sometimes a long uphill haul to a road. But deer hunters never fail to muster the energy to bring that trophy back. Make no mistake about it, any deer is a trophy. You can't eat the antlers, and a smaller deer like this with smaller antlers is likely to be better on the table anyhow. Bob Bolton loves venison too, so he was proud of this spike horn. He won't make big buck night, but his favorite recipe just might be a winner in our wild game cooking contest coming up in March. This was a big spike horn too, but you know, deer seem to be larger than average this season. We've had good winters the past few years, lots of acorns this fall, deer are healthy. A lot of hunters were successful on opening day and almost everybody saw deer in the woods making a great season opener in lower Michigan. In the Upper Peninsula, Bob Garner met with similar success everywhere he went. He talked to many happy hunters. The log cabin hunting camps weren't empty on opening weekend. They were full of successful hunters who had nothing more to do than sit inside, brag, tell jokes, eat, play poker. Tough life, isn't it? This is all a part of hunting camp. It's a big attraction in the North Woods on November 15th. Talk about a getaway weekend. Deer camp is it. You know, there aren't too many hunters who leave the North Woods weighing less or even the same as when they came up. I don't have any validated statistics, but my own personal statistics show that three to five pounds is an average gain for a few days at deer camp. The southern part of the UP didn't have as much snow as lower Michigan, but deer were plentiful. Some big bucks were taken, along with some unusual trophies. We find a few of these every year, does with antlers, or bucks with female reproductive organs, I don't know which. Bob Garner ran across Chris Jodice from Rock, who bagged a buck named Sue. It had one long antler covered with velvet, so it appeared to be a buck, but it wasn't. It didn't have the rest of the normal buck plumbing. One of the oddities we found during a very successful deer season opener in Michigan Outdoors.
Well, this isn't a buck named Sue. This is a bona fide buck right here, one that is going to adorn our walls now in Michigan Outdoors Cabin. But it, can, can you believe it, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen points. This is the minimum size, basically, that we're having on our live big buck night. <laughs> Can't believe it. The deer have been huge this year in the woods. Lot of Stroh's Big Buck Awards we're going to be giving out for bucks that are 10 points and above. Of course, the entry form, application form, it's free, is here in the Outdoor Digest. Address coming up at the end of the program. This year's bucks are big, all right, but let's not forget those lucky hunters who earned Big Buck Awards last year. A late season holdout, Larry Fulton from Homer bagged this 10 pointer with long tines and a wide spread. He got it on the last day of the season last year in Calhoun County. And this year, Southern Michigan Bucks still dominate the trophy book. From Livingston County, a 12 pointer taken on opening day by Terry Hatch from Gregory. It's an unusual rack. It has five tines on the right side, seven on the left. Nice deer. On the 12th of November, Steve Kinney from Eaton Rapids took this basket shaped buck. Looked like a beach ball would fit inside this rounded rack. It has 10 points, a couple of 8-inch tines, but it's only 14 inches wide. Weighed 190 pounds, was a 5-and-a-half-year-old from Eaton County. Daniel Campo from Linden is a traditional hunter who qualified with this 10-point, 200-pound Washtenaw County buck. Now, Dan must be a good hunter. Must be a good shot, too, because he bagged this trophy with a muzzle loader. In fact, the gun in the picture appears to be a flintlock. Congratulations to Dan. Just getting that flintlock to fire during those drizzly opening days was an accomplishment in itself. Now, to prove that you don't have to be a seasoned veteran to get a Big Buck Award, here is 14-year-old Tim Thompson from Battle Creek. His first year of hunting, 7.45 in the morning on opening day, Tim got this 200-pounder in his sights, squeezed off a perfect shot, and made the trophy book with this 10-pointer. Put another stripe on Tim's sleeve. And to prove you don't have to be a seasoned veteran or a male hunter is Gail McAllister from Owasso. She bought a 32-pound bow in August, practiced every day, and on November 10th took this six-pointer from a tree stand. Now, her hunting friend, Dick Potter from Owasso, took another six-pointer from the sta same stand two days later, but the spotlight really belongs on Gail for showing that a first-time hunter can use a light bow if you practice and you'll be successful. It's not the equipment, it's the skill of the hunter that makes the difference. This time, the skill of Gail McAllister from Owasso makes her our Michigan Outdoors Deer Hunter of the Week. You know, in the Digest, there's a lot of articles here. Bob on Deer Hunting on the Rut by Leonard Lee Rue, a Hot Pursuit by uh, Dr. Rob Wagner of Deer and Deer Hunting Magazine. And for muzzle loaders, we have a special article here by Rick Hacker, who wrote The Muzzle Loading Hunter. Good article. Got me interested in muzzle loading. Oh, I wish I didn't have it. I wish I had a tag to fill yet. I think I'd be on muzzle loading, hunter. Well, I'll tell you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into muzzle loading. We have a question in a mailbag, Bob, for you about rabbit hunting, one of your specialties. C. Wright from Mount Morris asks, how do you find rabbits when you don't have hunting dogs? It's no big problem. I, I really went a lot of years there without being able to have a dog. And if you can find habitat like this where it's really thick, okay, whether it be multiflora rows, uh, trees knocked down, uh, old, this is an old red pine plantation that had been cut, or even real thick uh, sorts of spruce, uh, cattail marshes, any of those places where it's really thick, get in, stomp around, mm -hmm. and you're going to find rabbits. Bunnies like the thick stuff, so that's where you have to go. They're very easy to find. Uh, a question for you, Fred, uh, from Mark Shortridge of uh, Armada. Is it legal to spear or shoot fish with a bow and arrow without a license or a permit on public or my own property? Is there a certain time of the year you can spear fish, or is it year-round? I've seen people shoot fish with a crossbow. Is this legal? Not with a crossbow, Mark. That is illegal to use for hunting in Michigan for anything. So crossbows are out. Spear guns like this, well, this is a spear gun. Most people that use these use them in salt water for saltwater fish. They are legal in certain places, certain areas, certain times for certain fish in Michigan. Consult with the DNR for that long, complex list of rules as far as bow fishing. Rules are a little less complex, but check your fishing guide because that will give you the rundown. You do need a fishing license with a bow if you're over 70 years of age just like fishing well, that's the answer to that now let's see mark and everybody else out there if you can answer this question in our outdoor quiz as the number of hunters per square mile on public land increased in recent years how has this affected hunting accident rates 
Well, not much, according to the National Safety Council. In the past decade, hunting accidents have decreased 7.4%, a safety record for which all American hunters should be commended. The Manistee River. This was last November, Bob. Fishing like this no, really is available. There's a little no. snow on the banks nowadays. Oh, there's a lot of snow on the banks, but you're right, the fishing goes all winter long, and December is a great month to steelhead fish. Most people cringe at the thought of fishing in the winter. Uh, you know, not ice fishing especially, and at least in ice fishing, you're dressed in a snowmobile suit, <laughs> yeah. you waddle out on the ice, you plop down, and you're bundled up, and you catch a few fish and leave. But when you're out on a river, in a riverboat. People don't look upon that with uh, a lot of expectation, you know. It's a, it's, it's, it really is a good experience. You can have a pot of, like on Emil Dean's uh, riverboat here, you can have a pot of chili going and maybe some hot dogs and, and make uh, a fishing day kind of a, a nice day to be on the river. Well, what, what we're not looking at here is Emil's heated cabin. Well, you can see it in this shot. That's a heated cabin on a jet-powered riverboat that he had built, uh, he had that style built many years ago down on the St. Joe River. It's been copied by many, many people. And heated river boats are the way to go at this time of year. Yeah, and he patented, or not patented, but kind of invented that drop back method that's been so successful where you let the baits out behind the boat and let them work, and uh, by gosh, it usually does work. I got a nice steel head on right there. Now, this was last November. We haven't been able to squeeze in any fishing ourselves this November. I don't think we're going to get any in in December either. We have all the elk hunt planned. We have the cottontail rabbit hunt, a snowshoe hunt. We have so many things to do. And we're, re we're really jammed up. We were going to try to get over on the river with John Scrobot over the Osable where they do this, but the Osable will become ice jammed very quickly here. It sure appears yeah. that way with the weather we've had. But for those of you who might be interested, there are charter captains on the rivers in drift boats and in river boats. Emil Dean has openings, I'm sure. All of the guides and captains have openings on their river boats, and the fishing is good. If they have a heated cabin especially, uh, you'll have an enjoyable time. Hey, you know, it might be worth, uh, to, worth something to think about this as a Christmas present for some fishermen you know Not about. a bad idea. Uh, buy somebody a charter trip. There's with a the charter captain, even for the summer. But that's true, and you know, there's nothing, nothing much more thrilling than right there when, when one of those 10 or 11 pound steelhead finally make it to the boat. There aren't very many Master Angler Awards, about 27, I believe, for November and December. 3% of the fish turned into DNR Master Angler came in November and December. That's a microcosm of the number of fish, and it's only because fishing interest is down the fishing is not down, the fish are there. Oh, the, fish, the fishing is terrific and it will remain that way, especially on the Man of Steel, and the Man of Steel stay open uh, all through the winter. Maybe shut down for a few days, but that'll be the most. So grab yourself a riverboat, give somebody a charter trip as a Christmas present. Uh, if you're looking for more fair weather, look at some of the events coming up right now, especially our outdoor fair on our outdoor calendar. There is Captain Emil Dean with our own Kathy Beidler. When was this, Kath? November 10th. I was getting ready for deer season, but I thought I should catch some fishing first. And those steelhead <laughs> turned into what a we have. Great as a recipe, cream salmon. Well, cream Something different. steelhead. Right. In this right. case, because it's a good substitute. What do you think of that, Bob? Well, I'll tell you what, it, it ain't your basic chip beef on toast <laughs> stuff. This is really good. It is. It's tasty. I think the creamed salmon recipes, creamed fish with leftover fish. Yeah, and we smoke the fish first, mm -hmm. so it's got a smoky flavor to mm -hmm. it rather than just well, the other, oil. It sure does. The other ingredients really set it off. They don't just add to it, they set it off. That's right. I'll we'll complement each other. Preparing smoked fish is no big deal, right? No, it isn't. It's really easy. Yep. All you do is uh, just take Put the... Small smokers, the little chief is what we used. And take the, the bones out. Oh, definitely. You definitely want the bones out. And I did find quite a few in here. Now, this but, smoked fish I smoked, remember, this was oh, about a week or so ago. It was cold outside. It was. And the smoker took a long time, so this really has quite a heavy smoked flavor, even though it doesn't look too... It's a cold smoker, the right. little chief. Right, right. And... Uh, we want to flake it, put some... We're going to make it like a white sauce, and kind of a thin white sauce because... It actually will thicken up with all the fish and everything else in it. A couple tablespoons of flour. And in the butter. Right, just in the butter. Just stir this around. A lot of people will saute their onions right here in it, but um, I prefer not to. I like mine just a little bit crunchier and not all soggy. I'm going to add some milk. 
this is you have to add your milk slowly to this, otherwise it's going to burn. Mm -hmm. And it thickens up quite rapidly. Changes the color. Yes, it does. A little bit of paprika for color and flavor. It's that's kind of a hot flavor there. I can taste it. I can taste the paprika in this mm -hmm. recipe. Well, that looked to be about two cups of milk. Uh, about a cup and a half. Mm -hmm. Some white pepper so that you don't want to see the little black specks in your Yeah, fish. now white pepper, you know, is, is the inside of pepper That's kernels. right. That's right. Black pepper has both the outside and inside, and this is the sort of shelled J pepper. Just the very inside. Another mystery unveiled here. <laughs> Another mystery unveiled. That's right. This, now I'm going to add my onions here rather than in the butter. And peas. <clears throat> Canned peas. You probably could use frozen. You could use frozen, right? But provide fresh, a brighter if, color. You know, they were mm -hmm. fresh. And several cups and of a couple cups of fish, steelhead, leftover. Salmon. That's right. There it is. Our that creamed, is good. This is smoked salmon, but I I think well, you know, I'm not a big fan of heavily smoked That's fish right. and smoked foods, so I would actually prefer. To use boiled salmon or just leftover just fish? Just leftover for on the grill. For my taste. Mm -hmm. But, Bob, you like the smoked flavor, don't you? Yeah, I think I, you you never have, like, smoked anything really too much. No. But, yeah, but it's I, real heavy. Yeah, the, I can take a heavily smoked. But the, what this does is because it, it's a creamy sort of thing, it mellows that smoke out. It's mm -hmm. not a rich smoke. It's just kind of a, a good, good, steady background taste. Great recipe. This really is. You know, is. I bet you could even do this with leftover pheasant. Oh, anything chicken? Good. If you had chicken on the grill, you'd but let me stress: this is not your chip beef on toast stuff. <laughs> this is really great stuff. Bob wants it used on smoked <laughs> fish. Bob, why don't you tell the folks where they can get a copy of this recipe?